special guest speaker, the, uh, the, the Right Reverend Dr. Hodel. And uh, we're excited to, to hear what, uh, what the Lord's going to get through a special season in his own life and in his family. So, uh, special season when they get something like a chicken dinner or something. <laughs> I mean, come on. So, y'all give me your attention. Give it up for Dr. Hodel. School started this week, and um, this, for those who don't know, uh, last January I came down with cancer. And we've been working with it since then, and uh, I I was really needed to Greg. I pulled the cancer card off, and I said, "This may be the last chance I have to talk to youth." Well, that's not the case, but you know, you know, I wanted to get in here and be with you all, so I, I, I pulled rank. Um, but anyway, it, it, on a, if someone's giving a talk like that. Uh, the grown-up's reaction is going to be show reverence and respect. Listen attentively. If you've been in my class, you know that's not me. Um, and so while I'm talking today, if you have any questions or any comments, if it's totally random, I'll put you off to the end, but go ahead and you know, flag me down. Let's talk about stuff here, because this is, this is an unusual situation to deal with here. Um, so, the first thing I want to say before we get started is go ahead and ask questions, interrupt me. If we have time for table conversation, great. If we don't, uh, the other teachers could be mad at me, that's cool. I haven't been here, so I've got time to make up for it. Um, second thing, uh, because of my condition, there's a few things that might happen. I don't think they will. The doctors change my medications a little bit. But the tumor sometimes gives me uh, a coffin fit. And usually what happens with that, I'll get a little lightheaded. So if I just like stop for a second and stare into the room for a moment, I'm just getting rid of those checkered board spots you always see when you stand up too fast. Um, but sometimes it gets worse than that, and I might get sick to my stomach. If that happens, I will say the magic secret code phrase, Kayla, take over, and my daughter will come up here and pretend to be me as my stunt double, while everybody else gets me out of here so we can clean me up and end up grossing out. Um, one other, it's only happened once, but it was last Saturday night, and so I'll just wipe it up. If I cough real hard, and it actually can cut off my circulation, and I might black out for about a half a minute. And it's a little scary to see. My, my kids saw it. Uh, my wife was a nurse, so she was able to take care of me. But anyway, I don't think any of that's going to happen. But just in case it does, if I start hacking, just be patient with me. I'm going to do the best that I can. And lastly, for the last two and a half weeks, my body has been getting irradiated with high-powered x-rays. Don't make me angry. <laughs> you wouldn't like to see me angry. All right. What I've got up on the screen here is a verse that if you've been raised in a Baptist church, if you're like me, your heart just sank. It's like, oh, God, another salvation sermon. This is me. I, we're going to look at this verse today in a way that I don't think most of you have before, unless you've been in my class, in which case I kind of hinted at it from time to time. But this has become much more meaningful to me over the last six months. I want to talk a little bit about how that's worked out. So let's uh, go to the outline of what I'm going to talk about. This talk has two parts to it. The first half, for those who want the gory details, I'm going to talk about what it's like having cancer that won't get better. Um, and we'll, we'll go over that a little bit. And we'll talk about uh, things not to do. There's a lot of, when you deal with someone who's going through a crisis, it doesn't matter if it's cancer or the grandma died or whatever it is, um, it's scary and, and you want to talk to them as like, what do you say? You ever feel like that? You know, I have a lot of people who haven't figured out what to say, but they say something anyway. And I'll talk about a little bit of that and, and, and how we react. And I'll also talk about what to do when you're dealing with people like that. And I think that might help you a little bit. But then, um, the next part is a speech I've been given to my kids over the last month or so about what's really important to me. And this is really the foundation of how I, live, how I approach being a Christian, where we'd like to go. So let's go to the first part of the talk, which is what's going on? Diagnosis and treatment. And uh, I guess you can zip up to, there's a long list of their math. There we go. I'm not going to go through all of those. That's a sort of like a history lesson of each month of the year, what's been going on. And it's been busy. The main thing out of that is, in the standard, okay, the kind of cancer I have is called a lymphoma. Uh, you know, you got your lymph system in your body, which helps your immune system and stuff. 
And lymphoma is technically considered to be like a blood disease. It's usually a lymphoma leukemia society or something like that. Um, there are, the standard treatment is something called RCHOP, and each letter stands for a different drug. And the tumor melts away. Mine didn't melt away. It shrank by we did, but it didn't go. So they said, hmm, this is bad. We're going to send you to UAB, where uh, I'm seeing a guy named Andres Torero. He's so cool. He's from Colombia. And he comes walking the first day, hello, my friend, how are you today? And I looked at him, well, oh, besides cancer, I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, I'd like to talk to you, my friend. Let me tell you what we are going to do. And he put me on a, uh, that's just what he sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just incredible enthusiasm. Dr. Graves, the oncologist in town that uh, was treating me here, same way, just real powerful people, encouraging. But anyway, he put me on a treatment called RICE, uh, <coughs> where we're getting the three, you know, four letters stand for different drugs. And uh, it was terrible uh, for me. Um, I, I, in the first treatment, I thought I was going to die. This one, I wanted to. It, it was just liquid death sucking everything out of my body. But the tumor grew. I mean, that's not fair. I mean, the chemo's working great on me. But the tumor actually got about another centimeter wider. And doctor, and the way I reacted to it, I talked about how bad it was. Uh, just a second there, Dr. Ferrero said, that's not supposed to happen. And so he did a CAT scan, and we found a number of different things going on. But the main thing he determined is, chemotherapy is not going to work for me. The tumor is not going to work. Uh, Y'all are too young to remember, but back in the 80s, President Reagan's wife, Nancy, had the slogan, just say no to drugs. That's my tumor. Uh, so we're right, we can switch to uh, radiation treatment now, which is the next page here. Put that up there. You can see a couple pictures there. Um, it's, uh, it's a kind of a weird experience having someone stretch a mask over you. And first they put it down, it just feels like a wet rag, and then it hardened. And they left me there for half an hour while they make all these measurements and get things calibrated. Typically, on a typical day, I'm under that thing for about five minutes. They zap up above for 30 seconds, they zap below for 30 seconds. They come in, they unbuckle in, they let me out. But every so often, um, every so often uh, they'll have to do a CAT scan or something, I'll be under that thing for about an hour. Um, and that's where, anybody who got claustrophobia? It, 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 uh, I, after about half an hour, I began getting just a wee bit panicky. Um, and uh, there's a verse in Colossians chapter 3, the very beginning. It says, set your mind on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Well, I got a good imagination, so while I was sitting there underneath Mr. Mask, can't, I mean, got the head way back like this, I can't move at all. And I uh, just began imagining myself with God. And as has been happening for many months, my, my wife has talked about this also, we read about God's with you, and we hear that God is with you. I know God is with me. Amen. Because in those moments, I, his, his pre I, okay, God is everywhere, but Moses said, I won't go into the promised land unless your presence goes with us. There's something more that can come with God. And that came there. And so I was underneath that mask for 45 minutes, almost an hour the other day. And I was so relaxed, the guy that was running it, the machine thought I was sleeping. Um, which, uh, I was awful close, but anyway. Uh, the, uh, the guy that's treating me is a guy by the name of Double Power. Don't you know that name? The, the, the other doctors from Columbia, they can't pronounce it because it's like a German name. It's funny listening to them try to say each other's names. But um, uh, I have... One of the things that we found is that the tumor is pressing on a couple places we really wish it wasn't. One, I'm about to speak in tongues, the superior vena cava. There's a vein in your chest that drains basically the upper half of your body. Mine's getting pinched. That's why I black out when I cough too hard, because the pressure from the tumor and the coughing will just cut things off. And so as a result, I have very poor circulation and I'm very weak all the time. The other thing is the doctor was looking at the CAT scan and you've got a diaphragm that controls your breathing. I didn't know it, but it's in two halves. This half isn't working. It's like completely relaxed. It's way up here now. And so I'm basically working off of one lung, and, uh, which is why I'm sitting instead of standing. I, I can stand and walk for about 10 or 15 seconds, and then, woo! <laughs> it wouldn't be great.